Hello, this is Dr. Adam Manley from Western Michigan University, and today we're going to start session one. Session one is entitled Introduction to the Trades. The overall agenda for this particular section is, is that we're going to talk about job outlook, the typical career ladder for a plumbing or HVACR professional, history of plumbing and HVCAR, the plumbing industry, including education, certifications, important essential skills, the work environment, compensation, and detailed job outlook. The same goes for the HVACR industry. Now the overall outlook for the profession is looking very strong. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there is going to be a 21 percent growth in industry workforce needs between now and 2022. That equates to 82,300 new jobs in plumbing and 55,900 new jobs in HVACR, and that's not including those that are retiring. The average technician salaries are running at about $49,000 per year plus benefits. Now your typical career ladder with average salary looks like this. <clears throat> Most people start out as an HVAC technician and then they work their way through more education, more training, more certifications, and licenses, find their way working up the ladder. Of course, many people stop at technician. However, there is a tremendous career ladder in these professions. The history of the history of plumbing is a very interesting one. The name of the first plumber is actually unknown, but we know the craft was performed in ancient times. Water cisterns have been discovered that were used by the Babylonians 5,000 years ago. Made of masonry, these cisterns were most likely used to collect rainwater for distribution to the people. Even before that, man used simple things like cups and trenches to move water from one place to another. About 4,000 years ago, vented toilets were used in Crete. The Romans had the most extensive plumbing system of civilization to that time, and they gave us the word plumber, which comes from the Latin word plumbum, meaning lead. Originally, a plumber was a lead worker, so the Latin name was applied to such workers. Very little lead work remains in the 21st century American plumbing work, mostly because of reasons of safety and health. After the era of domination of the Roman Empire, plumbing actually declined in use. This decline frequently is cited as the cause of many health epidemics that occurred during the Middle Ages. During the late Middle Ages, plumbing enjoyed a comeback, and effective plumbing systems are, known, are now known to be essential to the survival of large population centers. Plumbing fixtures similar to those we know today were developed in the 19th century. The bathtub was developed by Lord Russell of England in the 1830s, and the siphonic water closet was developed by Sir John Harrington and improved by Sir Thomas Crapper, although there's much controversy over his role, in the 1880s. In the United States, plumbing systems were developed with the assistance of plumbers beginning in the 1850s. In the 20th century, three fields of work in the United States combined to produce safe water systems that are generally expected and try to encourage all populations of the world to develop, two, the production of pure water for distribution to the public, and three, a total field of plumbing and sewage and waste treatment industry. Now the history of HVACR is another interesting one. The term air conditioning refers to the cooling and heating of indoor air for human comfort. In a broader sense, the term can re actually refer to any form of cooling, heating, or ventilation that modifies the condition of the air. The concept of air conditioning is known to have been applied in ancient Rome, where aqueduct water was circulated through walls of certain houses to cool them. Similar techniques in medieval Persia involved the use of cisterns and wind towers to cool buildings during the hot season. Cistern water evaporated, cooling the air in the building. This is similar to the air you feel when spraying water from a garden hose or, from, or the water spray from a mister. Modern air conditioning emerged from advances in chemistry during the 19th century. 
The first large-scale electric air conditioning system was invented and used in 1902 by Willis Carrier. <clears throat> Carrier was a mechanical engineer who worked at the Buffalo Forge Company in Buffalo, New York. Companies carrying his name helped conquer the temperature-humidity relationship, merging theory with practical applications. Starting in 1902, he designed a spray-type temperature and humidity-controlled system. His induction system for multi-room office buildings, hotels, apartments, and hospitals was just another of his air-related inventions. Many industry professionals and, and historians consider Carrier the father of air conditioning. Prior to Carrier was Michael Faraday, who in 1920 discovered that compressing and liquefying ammonia could chill air when the liquefied ammonia was allowed to evaporate. In 1842, Florida physician John Gorey used compressor technology to create ice, which he used to cool air for his patents, patients in his hospital in Apalachicola, Florida. Gorey was granted the first patent for an air conditioning related device in 1851. The first air conditioners and refrigerators used toxic and flammable gases like ammonia, methyl chloride, and propane, which could result in fatal accidents if they leaked. Thomas Migley Jr developed the first chlorofluorocarbon gas called Freon in, eight, in 1922. Freon, manufactured by the company DuPont, was much safer for humans, but was later found to be harmful to the atmosphere's ozone layer. So let's fast, let's fast forward to the plumbing industry today. Basically what plumbers do is they install and repair water, drainage and gas pipes in homes, businesses, and factories. The jobs range from big to small, new and old. A typical plumbing jobs include installing pipes and fixtures, interpreting blueprints and following state and local building codes, determining the amount of material and type of equipment needed, inspecting and testing installed pipe systems and pipelines, troubleshooting and repairing or replacing systems that are not working, and replacing worn out parts. The work envir environment for plumbers varies wildly. They could one day work in a home, another day work in a business, and another day work in an institution or an industrial setting. Work is throughout the country, urban, suburban, and rural. Typically though, there's travel to and from work sites, as you're never in one place for too long of a period of time. Also, you typically work outdoors. You must be able to lift heavy materials, you must be able to climb ladders, you must be able to work in tight spaces occasionally, and you will typically, because of the high demand, be working full time, which is a good thing. However, there are times where you're going to have to work nights and weekends when you're on call. And of course, because there's such a demand for plumbers, overtime is very common. Now the education needed goes something like this. First of all, you need a GED or a high school diploma. And then most a plumbers go through some form of an apprenticeship, typically four to five years. However, some start by attending a technical or trade school or a community college. When it comes to licenses, certifications, and registrations, most states and localities require plumbers to be licensed. Licensing requirements vary, but most require workers to have two to five years of experience and pass some type of knowledge exam. Some states require a separate license to work on gas lines. So of course you would need to check with your individual state licensing board for more specific requirements. Now there are some essential skills. Not only do you need the mechanical and technical skills for the job, but you also need business skills. You need to be able to work directly with workers, bid on jobs potentially, and plan your work schedule. There's also a tremendous need for customer service skills. You have to be polite, courteous, and of course have some form of physical strength to be able to, con to do the job, such as lift and move heavy pipe and plumbing fixtures. And then one of the most important skills you need in plumbing industry are troubleshooting problems. Not everything can be found in a book, and so it's the ability to find, diagnose, and repair the problems. Starting pay for an apprentice is very strong. For apprentices, typically 50% of the rate paid to a fully trained plumber. 
and your pay increases are given as apprentices learn more. Typically, it's twice per year. Now, when it comes to the detailed job outlook for plumbers, employment is expected to grow 21% from 2012 to 2022. That's twice the average for all occupations. And the demand stems from new building construction and stricter water efficiency standards for plumbing systems. Employers re report difficulty in finding qualified workers, and they really are looking for workers that have welding experience. They tend to have the best job opportunities. Now, if we look at the HVACR industry today, Heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration technicians work on systems that control the temperature and air quality in buildings. HVACR technicians, they work all over the place, once again, just like plumbers, homes, schools, hospitals, office buildings, and factories. Your typical HVAC, H, HVACR jobs include interpreting blueprints and designing specifications to install or repair HVR systems, connect systems to fuel and water supply lines and air ducts and other components, install electrical wiring and controls and tests for operations, inspect and maintain HVACR systems, test individual components to determine necessary repairs, repair or replace worn or defective parts, and determine HVACR systems energy use and make recommendations to approve energy efficiency. The work environment is very similar to a plumbing work environment in the sense that you're working all over the place you typically have to travel to and from work sites. There are jobs in urban, suburban, and rural settings. There's a good chance you're going to be working outdoors. There are many government regulations regarding conservation, recovery, and recycling of refrigerants, so you have to know those and, and abide by them. You must be able, once again, to lift heavy materials. You must be able to climb ladders and work in tight spaces, and because of the high demand, once again, Working full-time is not uncommon, and that could include nights and weekends when you're on call. And overtime, especially during peak heating and cooling season, is very common. The education track is very similar as, as it is with plumbing. High school diploma, or equivalent, is usually required. And most go through some type of an apprenticeship, which is typically four to five years. However, some start by attending a trade or technical school. When it comes to licensing certifications and registrations for HVACR technicians, all technicians must pass an EPA refrigerant handling exam. Some states and localities require HVACR technicians to be licensed. Licensing requirements vary, but once again, it's typically two to five years and some type of knowledge exam that you have to pass. And of course, you'd have to check with your individual state licensing boards for specific requirements. There are independent certification exams available as well. Just like with plumbing, it's not only enough that you have a technical skill component. You also have to have customer service skills. You have to be very detail-oriented. You have to have those mechanical skills so you know to choose the correct tools and successfully install and repair and maintain systems. There's a physical strength component to this. You have to be able to sometimes lift heavy equipment. Once again, just like with plumbing, there's a lot of troubleshooting. And also, as with plumbing, although not listed on the plumbing one, time management skills are very important. Starting pay is for apprentices is very similar to a plumber's. Starting pay for apprentices is typically 50% of the rate paid to a fully trained HVACR technician. And the pay increases are given as apprentices learn more, which is typically twice per year. The HVACR detailed job outlook looks something like this. Once again, employment is projected to grow 21% from 2012 to 2022. That's twice the national average for all occupations. Now, in HVACR, the demand typically stems, stems from new building construction and the growing emphasis on energy efficiency and pollution reduction. Employers report difficulty in finding qualified workers, which only increases demand. So the next step in this session, just like with all the sessions, is that you should probably study the PDF handout of this PowerPoint presentation 
and then attempt to take the session one quiz. I wish you good luck. Thank you.